morning. Boomer here. Sunday morning, May the 10th. And I'm headed out of Daleville, and I know you can hear the traffic noise because it's right off Interstate 81. Uh, just walking through a little bit of woods uh, up this pretty little hill right here. Uh, let me flip the camera around so you can see. Uh, pretty little trail, nice little urban trail. I know we'll get up and we'll cross under I-81 in uh, a little while and really get back into more serious wood. But, uh, for now, you know, we're still in suburban Roanoke. So anyway, I had a good stay here. Found some of the best sausage biscuits and country ham biscuits I've ever had. And if you happen to be a through hiker watching this, when you cross the road, there's a little convenience store right where you go back into the woods. I think it's, I've forgotten the name of it, but it's got two letters uh, for the name. And you go in there and that lady that fixes those biscuits, she has got it down. I had a country ham, egg and cheese biscuit today and I had one yesterday, they were that good. But anyway, if you stop by there, be sure and stop in and get one of those biscuits because you will not regret it. In the meantime, I'm going to keep hiking, so I'll talk to you later. All right, here we are crossing under Interstate 81 for the second time on this hike. Um, so, a lot of traffic noise, a little bit smaller road than we had the first time, but we'll see where it takes us. I just came through one of these turnstile fences uh, gates, for lack of a better word. I don't really know what to call them, but I'm coming into some more of these lovely Virginia open fields. Obviously, I'm going up and over that little rise there. Don't know how far it goes, but I actually, I actually really like being out in pasture land like this. But just wanted to show you because I thought it was very pretty. All right, we've stopped at the Full Heart Knob Shelter for a quick break to get a little something to eat. And it's really pretty up here today. You look all the way around. The only thing it is when you're on top of a knob like this, it's almost always windy. So if there's wind noise on here, I'll have to do something about it. But anyway, it's, uh, it's, a, be it's a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Ran into a friend out here. Hey, snake. That's a good snake. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm trying to make you famous and you're not cooperating. All right, there you go. Move a little bit. See you later. Good morning, Monday, May the 11th, and I am leaving the Wilson Creek Shelter and headed north. And I'll get back with you just as soon as I find something interesting. All right, the wind noise here was bad enough that I had to cut the audio out. I know how some of you feel about that, and I know how I feel about that. So I'm just going to be quiet and let you take a look at the views here. They were very pretty, and this is off the Blue Ridge Parkway. Just came down to a road crossing and saw this beautiful stream. I love it. I think it's headed toward the James River. Good morning, Boomer here. This is Wednesday, May the 13th, and here comes the sun. Good morning, Wednesday, May the 13th. This is Boomer here getting ready to leave the Cornelius Creek Shelter. Uh, it is a about quarter of eight, and if I can pull it off and do 20 miles today, right at 20 miles, I can get all the way to the James River and cross that long footbridge. And so that's my goal. I hope I make it, but if I don't, I'll stop somewhere before that, and we'll move on from there. 
I want to share with you now an amazing couple and their four-year-old son that have some big plans for the next year or two as far as the Appalachian Trail goes. So let me let me introduce you to them and let them tell you what they plan to do. All right, well, you guys tell me your names and what you're doing out here now and what you're planning to do next year. My name's Cassie Sutton, and this is Harvey. He's four right now, right, bud? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm uh, Josh Sutton, and uh, we're planning on, hopefully, uh, uh, doing a through hike next year with Harvey uh, when he is right before he turns five. So today we're doing a 50 miler to test it out and see how we do. So now, how, how many of the 50 miles have you already done? 35. 35? Yep. And he's doing a great. Yep, he's doing excellent. He's getting it every day. About nine miles a day the last couple of days. Will this make him the youngest through hiker ever? It would. Uh, yeah, we'd beat the Buddy the Backpacker by a couple of months, I think, if, if we do it. Yeah, if we can accomplish it. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Uh, I know when my son sees this, he's going to be so jealous. <laughs> but anything else you want to add? Um, our Instagram handle is li at Liv Sutton. Yeah. If you want to follow along our journey. Okay, well, that sounds great. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. We were, we were. According to Gut Hooks, we are on Apple Orchard Mountain, and this is a weather radar station. Uh, very distinct. You can see it from way down in the valley, and uh, it's very interesting looking. I want to show you the view that's cleared out here because of this particular station, too. too. All right, we are facing north from Apple Orchard Mountain, and as you can see, there's a lot of mountains out there. The trees have been trimmed back a little bit so you get a little bit better view, but uh, still not as much as I'd like to show you, but it's, it's pretty impressive. All right, meet the guillotine. And I'm here to tell you, if that fell, it would certainly do the trick. What I can't figure out is if that rock right there must be part of the bigger rock because I just don't see how it could stay there by itself that way. But anyway, getting ready to cross under the guillotine. Hopefully, I'll come out the other side. All right, I made it safely out the other side. We will resume our journey. This is the Thunder Ridge Overlook. I'm going to walk up on here. And holy cow, look at that view. That is something else. Wow. Let's start over here and do a pan. Isn't it nice to have a clear view of a valley and mountains like that? You don't get it often, but it's fantastic when you do. So this is a view from Thunder Ridge. Good morning, Boomer here. It's Thursday, May the 14th. As I was tearing down my tent, I looked off to the side and realized that I had a visitor. Seems to be fairly tame. All right, I am headed along a particularly pleasing section of the trail, and I'm a little less than seven miles away from the James River, where we will cross the longest footbridge, I think, on the trail. So, as you can see, it's not too bad this morning. The scenery is out there. You can see it, some of it through the trees, but anyway, I have complained about other sections of the trail, so I thought I would stop and compliment this section of the trail leading to the James River. Boomer here again. Now, a lot of you remember back when I was around Damascus, I talked a little bit about setting up my tent and how it's not one of my favorite things to do, and that's why I tend to stay in shelters. It's just less trouble. So a lot of people may be wondering, why did you do it last night? Well, I've been having some issues lately with my backpack, and I was pretty sure that it was the way I was packing it 
not the backpack itself. I think it's a fine backpack. It's a ULA catalyst, and, and I do like the backpack. It does, it does a great job. But here was the problem. I was packing it in a way that was causing it to shift. It was moving back and forth on my back. I was constantly had to tug one strap or the other to try to get it back in position to reach back and shift it. Well, since I got online last night and started looking at all of these videos about how to pack a backpack, I started seeing some common themes. And what I did was adopt those common themes. And this morning when I packed my pack, I took some extra time and I made sure that I laid out the stuff in the order that, that it was heaviest and different things like that. And followed the advice of the people that I heard online. And the backpack has pretty much been staying in place today. It's been comfortable. I haven't had to shift it once. And I'm very pleased with the way it's feeling right now. So uh, I'm going to try this. I may dial in a few things here and there. But all in all, it's working a lot better than it was. So... If you have any additional backpacking advice for Boomer, then go ahead and comment uh, below the video and give me a list from the bottom of your pack to the top of your pack, what you pack where and why, because I'm interested in how other people do it too, not just these so-called experts that I see online. So if you'll take the time and do that, I will appreciate it very much. And hopefully by the time I get to Katahdin, I'll have this backpack issue dialed in perfectly. But anyway, Boomer out for now. I'm headed down about five miles to the James River in Glasgow, Virginia. So I'll talk to you later. All right, we're on the James William footbridge. This is the longest bridge on the Appalachian Trail. And Mr. Foote, who worked tirelessly to make this bridge a reality, did not live to see its completion. But I certainly think we owe him a debt of gratitude for all the work that he's done here. Anyway, we're headed across and hopefully we've got a hostel waiting for us in the parking lot. Mm -hmm.